guys, Dave here. Well, today I want to talk about some workshop tips and tricks. So let's get started. Old plastic Cool Whip containers or, or something similar to that, they're good to put paint in. So you, you know, you say you're going to be painting just small parts of a house or a project in your garage, and then you can put a lid on it and you can keep it for a few days. You can't keep it indefinite in these. It's not real airtight, but it will do it for a few days. You're going to be painting something else later, or in a few hours or whatever. Get you some pl plastic sandwich bags. And store your paintbrushes in them. And you can zip it up. And it'll last for uh, a couple days like that. If you want it to last a little bit longer, put it in your refrigerator. But they also today, they make this little paintbrush cover. And you can uh, put your brush in here, and it's got a little cushion up here, and store it. That's pretty handy. The lid from the bowls make a good paint palette. A lot of people's drinking water these days. I'm one of them. Keep your lids. They're good to hold dog on your craft paint in. When using something like steel wool or stains, buy these little chip brushes. Once you use them, you can throw them away. Use old peanut butter jars or pills, bottles, or your nut cans to store down screws. I've got steel wool and vinegar in one. I've got little screws in this one. They're good for storage. I also keep some lids from the jars in my shop. And if I need to make a circle, or you want to radius a corner, they're perfect for that. You know, but a compass will only do so big. So what do you do if you need something bigger than it? Get you a piece of cardboard. Cut you a piece of cardboard, put you a hole on one end with a nail, and measure up how big you want your hole, which is going to be half the diameter here. Put your, just barely tap your nail in the center. Then take your pencil. And then you can make your Make it as big as circles you want. For sanding details and carvings, you can buy these little sander detail kit from Hobby Lobby. It's good at sanding spots in here where you get fuzzies or something. When you go sometimes to events, they give you these little writing pads. They're, they're good to take notes in the shop. Plus, um, like if you want to mix up something like uh, JB Weld or Bondo. Plus keep your old uh, gift cards. They're good for mixing. And when you're done, now you got a clean slate. Use binder clips to hang the plastic bags on the pegboard or your sandpaper. Put a label on them what grid it is. Binder clips also make good little clamps for thin wood. If you got a pegboard in shop, you know, you cut this right here, they're loose. Put you down some hot glue. And it'll keep them in its place. If you got some old scissors in your shop and you want to keep them sharp, cut sandpaper with it. It will sharpen. If you've not got a center punch or you can't find a center punch, use a nail because you don't want to drill, you don't want to put your drill bit right on there because you'll wonder. You want to have your starting point. So line it up in the X. Now you got a starting point. If you've got some of these masonry nails, you see they've got these little flutes on here. These are hardened. You can also use them on metal. 
when nailing little nails like comes with these take your piece of painters tape then punch it through When you get it, you can also use a paper clip. Just slide it over it. It'll keep you from mashing your fingers. When, when you got small nails that's protruding and you need to countersink them to put some putty over them, get you a nail punch. It's flat on the bottom. It's not like a center punch. Then you can hold it over it. And it'll countersink it. You want it countersinked enough that you can put some putty on it. Keep you some woodcraft sticks in your shop look good for stirring up your stain make sure you don't splash it you can get some longer ones for the bigger cans or if you've got glue you can spread your glue out with it and they also great for mixing epoxy or JB Weld. When staining small parts like these shaker pegs or this wooden button, you know, measure the ends here and draw a hole according to the size. It's like I've got these right here, even for the little button, make a little shadow hole for it. Then get you a Q tip. Put your stain on the Q-tip, then you can stain your parts. These uh, liners for like your drawers in your kitchen and everything, you can buy them at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. They'll hold the, they'll hold it down while you're sanding. When you want to drill just a certain depth with your drill bit. Get you some tape and tape your, put your tape line on there. And you want to leave a flap. When you drill, you see the saw does. When the tape starts flapping it away, you've reached your point.